You may think your credit score isn't a big deal, but when your credit score increases, your opportunities do too, like loan approvals and lower interest rates. Chime makes it easier to build credit with a secured Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card. You can use it everywhere Visa Credit Cards are accepted. Chime helps you build your credit score safely by using your own money to make everyday purchases and on-time payments with the Safer Credit Building feature enabled. To apply, just open a Chime checking account with a $200 qualifying direct deposit. And don't stress, there's no annual fee or credit check required to apply and get started. Build your credit history and find new opportunities with Credit Builder today. Get started at Chime.com build. That's Chime.com build. The Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card is issued by Stride Bank N.A., member FDIC. Chime checking account and a 200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. Call 1-844-244-6363 for details. On-time payment history may have a positive impact on your credit score. Late payment may negatively impact your credit score. Results may vary. Hello, I'm Petri Hoskin, and if you're listening to this show, then it's safe to say you'll love Hacks and Flax. Hacks and Flax is where you get the inside scoop on how journalist hacks and the flax of government and business work behind the scenes to decide which stories you'll be reading with your morning coffee and perhaps more importantly, how they keep certain headlines off the front pages. I'm assisted by a regular panel of hacks and flax who lift the lid on that special relationship between press and politics. So let hacks and flax blow your mind and change the way you look at news forever. Nick Abbott on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Right, more of your thoughts on the four-day week and whether you approve of such a thing, as particularly if it is um, enacted by your local council. 0345 6060 973. But first, uh, let's jaunt over to America and talk to Simon Marks, LBC's US correspondent who is in Washington, D.C. Hello, Simon. Hello, Nick. So let's talk about Joe Biden first. Joe Biden um, has insisted that the United States were not working with the Wagner group when they um, jolted Vladimir Putin out of his uh, reverie. Um, What do we know about that? Uh, Well, at every turn over the last week, Joe Biden has been at pains to say America had nothing to do with the events that were uh, galvanizing the world's attention this time last week, that attempted uh, mutiny by uh, those brutal mercenaries of the Wagner group led by Yevgeny Prigozhin. Mr. Prigozhin, of course, at the time saying uh, that he was sending uh, his forces to Moscow and indeed they reached the outskirts of the city uh, in a bid, he said, uh, basically to force change at the top of the Ministry of Defence in Moscow. Uh, Then, uh, at the last minute, uh, he ordered a hasty retreat uh, by those forces that had just reached the outskirts of Moscow after uh, some kind of a deal was brokered between Prigozhin and Vladimir Putin that saw uh, the Wagner Group chief heading into essentially self-imposed exile in Belarus with the Russian government saying that it's now going uh, to uh, essentially take uh, the Wagner Group apart and uh, bring those mercenaries into uh, the military forces controlled by the Ministry of Defence. Let's see how that goes. But the United States, while it insists it had nothing to do with Uh, what some people this time last week were describing as an attempted coup is absolutely trying to capitalise upon it because this was the week when the CIA uh, uploaded a video to Telegram, uh, that private messaging app that is very widely used across Russia, urging Russians uh, essentially to ask themselves how content they are living in Vladimir Putin's uh, world uh, and suggesting to them that if they'd like to make change, well, the CIA would really like to hear from them. This is basically an effort by the CIA to recruit fresh human assets inside Russia to work for American intelligence agencies. And this video even ends with step-by-step instructions that tells people that uh, think they might want to get in touch with the American government exactly how to do it 
by using the dark internet, literally step-by-step instructions uh, with the CIA saying to any Russians that might be interested, uh, this is how you can get into in touch while protecting yourself. Now, we have no idea the extent to which there's been much of a response to this. Certainly the video was seen uh, more than two and a half million times in the week since it was uploaded. Uh, the CIA director, William Burns, uh, in a uh, speech to the Ditchley Foundation, which is an organisation in the UK that focuses uh, on transatlantic relations between the UK and the United States, uh, says that he believes that uh, the efforts by the mutineers last week is all part of uh, corrosive uh, ongoing gnawing at uh, Vladimir Putin's uh, command and control authority. And while clearly Vladimir Putin remains in control in Russia uh, tonight, uh, the US government increasingly believes that his grip on power has been shaken by the events of last weekend and that eventually the fracturing will lead to his downfall. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? It's, it's like a good old-fashioned propaganda leaflet drop, but for the modern age. Yeah, but it's so interesting interesting you say that because one of the things that the americans have not yet done and it's interesting when you think back to um the war in iraq uh that overthrew saddam hussein i mean there were leaflet drops going on there the americans engaged in leaflet drops in bosnia they put out sort of most wanted uh flyers uh, urging people uh, in bosnia and in serbia to turn uh villains into uh, nato forces there's been very there's been none of the leafleting campaign going on uh, in Ukraine and there have been some voices here critical of the Biden administration early on saying, you know, that they should have been dropping leaflets on Russian troops serving in Ukraine uh, and saying to them, surrender, turn yourself in, go home because there's no prospect of victory. So it is interesting to see what is a belated effort by the United States uh, to try and engage in a bit of an influence operation inside uh, Russia. Uh, also, I think there will be questions about just how much protection uh, the United States can offer to people that uh, think they want to sign up and help the CIA if there are Russians out there that want to do that, because they would clearly, those Russians, be putting themselves in considerable jeopardy given the absolute fury uh, that Vladimir Putin uh, more broadly has demonstrated when it comes to dissent inside his own country over the last several years. Quite now, um, let's talk about uh, things uh, more local to where you are. The U.S. Supreme Court has blocked a plan to cancel, cancel rather, hundreds of billions of dollars in student loan debt. This is one of uh, Joe Biden's big policies, wasn't it? Yeah, and it's a big problem for Joe Biden because he uh, pledged this on the campaign trail when he was running for the presidency and younger voters particularly and of course their families uh, 40 million of them are very keen to see themselves uh, being forgiven for some of this student loan debt. The Supreme Court though, I think to the surprise of not many people here in Washington DC concluded that the plan that Biden had unveiled overstepped his constitutional authority and whatever the the merits or otherwise of forgiving billions of dollars of student debt, uh, the president simply didn't have the authority to do it the way in which he was proposing. Now, there had been many people here who, when Joe Biden first unveiled this plan, said, well, hang on a second, the Supreme Court's going to stop that in its tracks. And indeed they have. He says he's going to try again and he's going to use something called the Higher Education Act this time. In other, in other words, another piece of, uh, of law to try and get it done that will undoubtedly also be appealed to the supreme court and we'll see where it lands but it's a it's a problem for joe biden because he needs to solve it in order to be able to say particularly to younger voters see i've, I've actually made good on my promises but this republican uh, appointed majority on the court on that, as on so many other issues, really has been bedeviling the White House. Yeah, the Republicans have played the long game with the Supreme Court, Absolutely. haven't they? And when um, one of the uh, members of the Supreme Court was due to be re replaced, they wouldn't allow um, uh, uh, Barack Obama to do it yep. because he was coming towards the end of his presidency. Now, when the same thing happened under Trump... They uh, apparently did not see that the same rules applied. And, uh, you know, of course, they just don't play the game 
when it's uh, when it suits them, and that the, 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 this um, uh, this uh, sort of long game has really paid off this last week, hasn't it? Because the Supreme Court has been very busy giving right wingers exactly what they wanted. One of which was this um, race-based affirmative action on college emissions. What's that about? Yeah, absolutely. Just, just parenthetically, the, the the man that Barack Obama wanted to put on the Supreme Court that the Republicans wouldn't even bring up for for uh, consideration was Merrick Garland, who of course is now the Attorney General of the United States under Joe Biden. So mm. he got a top position in the end. The affirmative action decision this week uh, means that universities and colleges across the United States can no longer engage in uh, any kind of race-based effort to redress uh, the issues of America's past when weighing up college and university admissions. So basically, as of now, if you fill out a, a document that is um, ludicrously uh, mistitled the common application, it's like the UCAS form here, except it isn't really because you end up having to complete it in multiple different ways for multiple different universities, but you will not be asked any longer what your racial background is, what your ethnic and racial uh, family history is uh, and colleges and universities will have to be um, uh, according to the Supreme Court blind to that issue when they offer university places now uh, this is a complicated issue uh, the left here in the United States particularly of the Democratic Party heavily favors affirmative action when it comes to uh, redressing the injustices of the past and making more university and college places available uh, particularly to blacks and Latinos, uh, Asian Americans argue that they actually have been discriminated against as a result of this affirmative action policy uh, because there are Asian American students that say that they were denied places at universities that went to black and Latino applicants because of the affirmative action policies. And there's a poll out today uh, that was uh, put together by ABC News uh, showing that most Americans actually approve of this Supreme Court decision to restrict the use of race in college applications. 52% uh, approved of the decision, 32% disapproved of it, and 16% said they didn't know. So this is also a problematic issue for Joe Biden because on the one hand he's got the left of the party saying you've got to do more to try and overturn this and to restore the rights of universities to look at race when weighing up uh, these applications. But on the other hand, the polling data suggests to him that that's not where the middle of the country uh, is. Uh, and so I think it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out uh, in light of the, the Supreme Court decision that came down on Friday. Yes. Uh, if we just started on a baseline of now and we disregarded the, uh, the, the sort of uh, the historical impediment for um, uh, non-white people to actually get ahead in America, then you could make the case that the Supreme Court is right and what they're doing is they're standing up against discrimination. But in the same week, the Supreme Court ruled that you can put a sign up saying we don't serve gays <laughs> and that's perfectly okay because it's discriminating against people they don't like. Yeah, you're absolutely right. There was a complete contradiction between the opinion that was handed down on affirmative action where Chief Justice John Roberts is basically saying if we're not going to discriminate against people, that means all people. We mustn't have any kind of discrimination whatsoever. And then hours later, they hand down this decision about a Colorado website designer who was asked by a same-sex couple to create a website celebrating their marriage and who refused based on her disapproval of same-sex relationships and the Supreme Court said, oh, that's absolutely fine. The, you don't have to do that. She had a First Amendment right, free speech. She had a First Amendment right not to provide that service uh, to this same-sex couple. And of course, there have been questions about, well, how far does that go? I mean, what happens if it was a black couple? What happens if it was a Jewish American couple? What happens uh, if there were all sorts of, you know, discriminatory uh, opportunities there? Yeah. Would those all be covered by the First Amendment? or is this very specific to same-sex relationships? Right. I mean, I mean if somebody came into uh, someone's store with uh, a MAGA hat on, yeah. 
<laughs> could, they, could they be refused service? And, and then we uh, go and to the, the Supreme Court and, and the ask the justices. Uh, yeah, and the, and the justices <laughs> would say, yes, that's perfectly okay. I it doubt it. It would be interesting to find out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How has the, the, su the Supreme Court viewed these days? Because the, the big thing that they had, um, the, the, the right wing have been you know, yearning after for such a long time, did it actually, this is, I'm talking about Roe versus Wade, yes. the ability to access abortion, did that sort of blow up in their face? Because you'd think that at least at least 50% of the population of America might not be um, well disposed to that. Yeah, well, I think that, of course, is what Democrats are counting upon. I mean, Joe Biden was asked this week, is this a rogue court? And he paused for about five seconds before saying, well, it's not a normal court. And in terms of his lifespan, absolutely it's not a normal court. But in terms of where the country finds itself, this is a court that Donald Trump put, uh, sat three justices on that created this new Republican-appointed majority that immediately went after Roe versus Wade, that landmark decision that kept uh, abortion legal from coast to coast for 50 years. And now you are seeing major efforts in states, particularly across the South, but also in some other parts of the country where Republicans are in charge, uh, to restrict abortion and in some cases attempt to try and outlaw it completely. Now, the Democrats will make that a huge talking point in the 2024 presidential election uh, and Joe Biden and Kamala Harris will hope that that helps their re-election efforts. The court itself, I mean, on the one hand, we've had this whole slew of decisions that clearly have delighted Republicans, but there have been some that have gone the other way. There was a, a surprise decision that came down uh, just a couple of weeks ago uh, about efforts by legislate legislators, lawmakers in Alabama to redraw the electoral map in the state in a way that absolutely would have helped uh, Republicans. You know, this kind of redrawing of boundaries goes on all over the country by both Republicans and Democrats in a bid to boost their uh, hopes at the polls, mm. often uh, on racial lines. And the Supreme Court ruled against this effort by Alabama uh, to create what they said was going to be a racially discriminatory electoral map. So that was one decision that went uh, much more in, in, in Joe Biden's favour than many of these others. But absolutely, the Democrats will be campaigning on some of these uh, obviously, uh, you know, right wing and conservative opinions as we head towards uh, the election of November next year. Now, there is some breaking news of um, some explosions in Washington, D.C. Um, what, what I've uh, understood is that there's a Molotov cocktail that exploded outside a night Nike store and uh, an ATM machine of um, a Truist bank, which I'm unfamiliar with, also um, a Safeway grocery store. What, what do you know about that? I am all too familiar with Truist Bank, Nick, but that's oh. a whole other story. Um, yes, it sounds like, according to police, a suspect was deliberately targeting businesses in the centre of Washington, D.C. So there was a an explosive device detonated by a suspect on the pavement outside this Truist uh, Bank branch. Uh, at 4.30 in the morning, then uh, a few minutes later, uh, an explosive device detonated outside a Nike uh, shop. And then uh, a little bit later, a Molotov cocktail thrown at a Safeway supermarket uh, in uh, the upper northwest area uh, of Washington, D.C. They've, they've got a suspect. Uh, they have a license plate, a number plate that, they, that they've given out. No one was hurt. Of course, all the businesses were closed because it was 4.30, 4.45 in the morning when all this happened mm. uh, but the detail of who was behind it and why we simply do not yet know and just finally um hunter biden i mean it's it's awful but it's also quite funny the um the revelations of what's on his laptop continue to be eye-opening um have you heard the latest yeah i mean he's the problem that always seems to bedevil Joe Biden, even when you think that the issues surrounding him have been resolved. So these are pictures uh, that have emerged from his laptop that were initially taken on a cell phone while he was driving at 172 miles per hour on a highway outside Las Vegas. He was uh, apparently driving a Porsche. I mean, you'd have to be, I would think, to get to 172 miles per hour. In August of 2018, en route 
to an encounter with multiple prostitutes. Must have been in a hurry to get there. Uh, when he took this picture <laughs> of, of him, of his dashboard, yeah. showing how fast the car was going. And if you look at this picture, you can actually see 172 miles per hour. And then to the right of it, there's a warning that's come up that says, reduce speed. Mm. Um, not immediately apparent that uh, he did that. Um, but uh, all of this is going to add uh, to Hunter Biden's woes. Uh, we're learning more, of course, about what was on that laptop because uh, Hunter Biden himself appeared... Uh, for a deposition on Friday uh, in uh, legal investigations into that laptop. He's also, of course, recently settled uh, with prosecutors uh, a case about uh, uh, lying on his taxes and lying on an, uh, an application for a gun license. Uh, but the Hunter Biden story r rolls on rather like he did in that, <laughs> yeah. in that porch. Yeah, I mean, uh, some other revelation is he pictured himself smoking crack while yes. driving through a residential area to the airport. He crashed a rental car in Palm Springs and lied about the accident to his insurer while on a 12-day bender. He's like, he's like Hunter S. Thompson and come back to life. He's like that PJ O'Rourke book come to life. How to drive fast on drugs while getting yes. your wing wang squeezed and not spill your drink. Without the literary <laughs> talent, it has to be said. <laughs> yeah. I blame the parents. <laughs> <laughs> Good to talk to you as always. Thanks Cheers a lot, me. Simon. Simon Marks, LBC's US correspondent, joining us from Washington, D.C. You may think your credit score isn't a big deal, but when your credit score increases, your opportunities do too, like loan approvals and lower interest rates. Chime makes it easier to build credit with a secured Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card. You can use it everywhere Visa Credit Cards are accepted. Chime helps you build your credit score safely by using your own money to make everyday purchases and on-time payments with the Safer Credit Building feature enabled. To apply, just open a Chime checking account with a $200 qualifying direct deposit. And don't stress, there's no annual fee or credit check required to apply and get started. Build your credit history and find new opportunities with Credit Builder today. Get started at Chime.com slash build. That's Chime.com slash build. The Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card is issued by Stride Bank N.A., member FDIC. Chime checking account and a 200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply. Call 1-844-244-6363 for details. On-time payment history may have a positive impact on your credit score. Late payment may negatively impact your credit score. Results may vary.